Today we're not going to do just one engine, but we're going to do two. I'm going to tear down a 350 and a 400 two-stroke engine. They're both like uh, out of 96s, 98s. Um, 350, as some of you might know, doesn't have the dipstick tube here like the 400 has for the counterbalancer. Uh, other than that, most of the uh, rest of everything is the same. Um, I got the jugs torn off already. Um, one's got a bad water pump. The other one's got a, a bad bearings in it. So we're going to start tearing them down. Um, first things first, um, take the flywheel off. And I got my flywheel puller hooked up. And uh, I'm going to pop that off, show you how to pull the stator out. And uh, we'll go from there. So sit tight and enjoy the show. All right, so I got this all cranked off. Sometimes you just give it a couple wraps after you got this uh, wheel puller tight and she pops right up. I put a screwdriver up here to hold the crankshaft in place so it wouldn't spin. Next we want to take the stator off and uh, a lot of times those stator bolts are hard to get out. There's one here, one there, one there. So I got a special tool. Uh, it's a punch. It punches and twists at the same time and breaks them, them bolts free. And I'll show you how to use those. Show them in the right direction here. Okay, so I meant to say screws before, not bolts. Uh, the three screws. Um, now, as you're taking the stator off, um, the last screw that comes out, there's a mark there that lines up with the case. And that's uh, your timing mark. So keep that in mind when you're taking this apart. Pull that out. And uh, there's a mark on the case, and there's a mark right there. So move that out of the way. And uh, you've got this goofy little nut. Now, I've got a special tool, the socket that pulls that out. It's uh, slotted. And these are, oh, geez, look at that. I've torn 20 engines apart, and I found this already. A lot of these loosen up. And this one's loose already, so that's not good. All right, so let's try this on the 350. So you're going uh, clockwise to get it off. Down there, hit the trigger, spins right out. If you don't have that socket, you can take a punch and a hammer and just try knocking that loose, get it spin free, and then uh, um, yeah, just do the rest by hand. But that tool comes in handy. Okay, so I got both of them uh, nuts off. The only thing you're going to need for the rest of this job now is a 10 millimeter and a 12 millimeter socket and uh, you might need a press also sometimes uh, you can get the case apart without uh, it being a problem you, know, you just knock the case halves apart but sometimes you have to use a press to get everything apart so you've got five 12 millimeter bolts that go all the way around and then four 10 millimeter nuts that hold the water pump on and two 10 millimeters on the outside. So I'm going to do both these cases at once. And you got this, uh, they call it a, a collar, 
Sometimes that comes out, sometimes it doesn't. That'll help free things. This should just come right out. Water pump glued on. There we have it. Now you can take your stator out the rest of the way. Bearings look good. It's a good sign. I'm gonna put that in here. There you go, then you got a gasket. Take that off. And I'll do the same thing over here. There we go. Bearing's real good on that one. Okay, so next we'll be taking the uh, water pump impellers off. Once again, it's a 10 millimeter nut. Do that both of those. So there's a nut, a washer, and a lock washer. When your impeller comes off, you just pull this right off. This is going to tell you right away if your bearings are bad. Um, usually these seals go bad. Uh, so that's the first thing you want to or not the first thing. You want to make sure you replace that stuff. This can be kind of a pain. That's all. I mean, it doesn't come off that hard. And if you notice, uh, if you can see right here, there's some wear on here. These, uh, these bearings go bad and the rubber seal goes bad and then uh, usually uh, wears on that counterbalancer shaft. So this is your counterbalancer, this is your crank. Now this is where you want to pay close attention. So this collar came off with that side but so normally you pull the collar off, you got an o-ring. Try to save that if it's still good. Then you have a shim. And that'll all go back together. Washer, collar, o ring. And then you can pull this out. It doesn't show up in the camera, but there's a timing mark here. And when you reassemble that, you assemble the, that timing mark up with the timing mark on that gear. You just go ahead and pull that apart. It just slides right off. There's a woodruff key that holds it in place. And then um, you don't have, if you're not going to do anything with a counterbalancer, you shouldn't have to remove those 10 millimeter bolts. That's a plate that holds the counterbalancer in the case side. Uh, I'm going to do that to the 350 right now, and uh, I'll be Alright, on the 350, this shaft for the counterbalancer, that looks really good. It's nice and clean. Uh, the water pump slid right off, um, so that's good. Now, the 400, it was kind of crusty. Um, I'm guessing part of the seals probably wore off and rubbed onto it. Um, so this is clean. This is actually really good. Um, I'm guessing there was probably an issue with just it leaking. The 400, uh, this is all crusty around here. Uh, if I do reuse it, I'd probably take a little sandpaper and scuff that up. Uh, you got to be careful because uh, you put your new seals in and it'll just chew your water pump seals right out. And uh, I guess I'll show you what's next. The next thing would be to take your woodruff key out. 
Ha. Right here. Normally it holds your uh, gear in place. So either it popped out once they, I pulled that out. So, which makes my job a little easier because them, them keys are sometimes a pain to get out. You pop it out. You have to remove that first before you split the case sides. Okay, then the next step. Okay, so you have five more 12 mil millimeter bolts. Those will come out and then uh, you can split the case. So right now what's holding it up is that collar that's in there. Those two things you could do, you could pull that gasket out and try to get the collar out. Or you could do what I'm doing, use the case to help pull the collar out. And that's, uh, that's the way I like to do it. There you go. One crankshaft removed. And then you want to pay attention. Here's that collar. It's stuck on the seal. And there is an O-ring on that side. The side's beveled. And you got your bearing on this side. This is your counterbalancer. And that actually looks pretty good. The bearings sound good. Looks in good shape. That drives your water pump. So yeah, we're sitting good there. I'm gonna pull that seal out. And uh, now we're gonna tear the 350 apart. So you saw how I did the 400. That's how I'm gonna do the 350. I'm gonna tell you what the difference is. Uh, here, you can see the collars on here. That just came right out. I don't know, I don't think I need to rip that case apart, but I'm going to do it anyway just to inspect it. I think this uh, engine's in good shape. I think the water pump leaked and it fried the piston. And here is the piston. I mean, that's pretty toast. So, this one I could probably just get away with putting the new water pump seals in and the bearings and be good to go. But I'm going to rip it apart and inspect it anyway, only because I'm this far. And, uh, see what them bearings look like. So the one thing I did want to show you, speaking of bearings, is these bearings were bad in here. I can't even turn it with my finger. It locks up. So I'll have to take a press, press them bearings out, put new bearings in on the 400. 350 I think we're sitting good. So just wanted to show you that. I had to show you this. Um, it's talking about uh, crankshaft seals. I have never seen anything like this. Uh, crankshaft seal actually melted off or oh my god somebody used um, <laughs> it looks like uh, <laughs> I can't even think of the word it looks like somebody put caulk on there to try to seal the crank if those seals are bad, it uh, it sucks air into the engine and leans out the engine. That might explain why the uh, the pistons fried. This is this is hilarious. I've never seen this before. Uh, somebody's uh, makeshift way of replacing a seal and it didn't work. It failed. So I just thought I'd show that to you. I thought it was pretty funny. So yeah, I'm gonna split this case apart, pull seals out, put some new seals in, check the bearings, and. Uh, this one should be good to go. I got the 350 all cleaned up nice. Um, now, normally there's a shim that goes in here. This engine didn't come with one, so I'm not going to put it back in there. The shim usually goes for end play. So what I did was uh, clean everything up nice, uh, put a little oil on both the bearings, and I should be able to take this crank and slide it right in. Here's a little 
little shove. There. Now she's in. So now I'll put my sealer around the edges and put the top on. Just putting a light coating of uh, a 3M sealer on there. I'm going to seal both case halves together. Now she should be ready to put back together. Let's see if I can find a spot for you to sit here while I'm doing that. Make sure you line up your doll pins. Just kind of walk this back and forth. Make sure I'm going to put a little oil on this side too. Helps everything slide together nice. There. I can uh, drive my screws through. Yeah, everything back all together nice. I'll just use the screws just to close it tight. All right. So I got my two long bolts. One goes here, one goes here. Three short ones. Right now, I'm just snugging that up, up to uh, tighten the case up. So I'm gonna go in a crisscross pattern. Yeah. Bringing that case halves together, nice. see case halves once to go went together really nice oh and that far I'm just gonna torque them right away I think it's uh, I believe it's uh, 18 to 20 pounds you guys aren't gonna be able to see this but I'm just gonna go on a crisscross pattern Forget the these two bolts. One goes up here, one goes down here. Ten millimeter. are six foot pounds. I'm just snugging them up. And I'll torque those later. Now we're done with that side. Okay, so if you remember when I took the engine apart, this collar was, uh, it stayed on there, but no ring goes on first, then this collar. And it shoves down. And you put your new seal on.
I like using oil on everything, so a little oil on the seal. It's all the way around. Some guys will use an actual sealer. Put the seal in, I don't think that's necessary. You just push it out with your fingers. Now I got a new seal, that's not going to leak. Now the next step is uh, put your woodruff key in. Let me bring that around. Woodruff key goes in there, and then that's going to slide okay, up. Okay, so on your counterbalancer, you have a timing mark right here, and then on this guy. timing mark is stamped there so turn the the crank until those two line up and then you'll slide them into place you set the camera down I'm just gonna get this guy started So, just slide right in. See, I kind of had to do that at an angle. Both the timing marks. Alright, right. so now for the most important part. Everybody seems to screw this up. I've done uh, about 25 different motors I've rebuilt already. And uh, people put the collar and the O-rings in backwards. So, I'm going to show you... My little cheat sheet. I don't know if you can read that. Let me hold that there for a second. Okay. So once you've got this gear on, first is a shim. That goes on. And there's an O-ring. O-ring slides over, roll it down. I've seen a lot of guys take these collars and they put them on backwards and they smush the O-ring. The collar has a beveled side on one side and the other side's flat. That's going to go the beveled side down. Anytime there's an O-ring, that bevel side goes down and covers the o-ring so once you got that completed then you can take your uh, your water pump and uh, so here's my water pump bearings didn't look good yet seal looks like it's shot so buy a seal kit there's two of these seals in there one goes in one direction this one goes in that direction slide that on it put your impeller on put your washer your lock washer and your 10 millimeter nut just goes on like that I'm not gonna bolt the down because I still have to get my my seals just to show you how that goes. Alright, so for video purposes, I'm just going to show you how this goes back together. Uh, I double checked my bearings on the side of the pan. It looks good. You clean the surface of that off. Clean the surface of your water pump. Put a new gasket on. And uh, I also took the seal out of here. And uh, you want to put that in last, and I'll show you why. So now on the water pump it has one longer stud that always goes to the right top and you'll see why once I put it together so go ahead and throw this in here I 
go ahead and get my water pump poles lined up. That bearing goes over that seal or over that collar. And then you'd put your seal over the top of this and then it would rest over the top of this collar. And you bolt everything down. 10 millimeter bolts or 10 millimeter nuts go on the water pump. And your two 10 millimeter bolts go here. And your five 12 millimeter bolts. Put them in a crisscross pattern. Torque them down to 18 to 20 foot pounds. And uh, then the last thing it would be to do was with your, your seal on, you put this nut on and you would tighten it counterclockwise. So I do not have my gasket kit or my water pump kit, so I can't show you how to do that. But this was to give you a general idea of uh, how to disassemble and reassemble a 350 or 400 liquid cooled two stroke engine. So I hope this helped you out. Um, enjoyed making the video. I, like I said, I wish I would have had this, uh, the rest of the seals. I could show you how this all went back together. Well, there you have it. Uh, subscribe to my channel. I've got uh, plenty of Polaris repairs, two strokes, four strokes, uh, whatever you got. Uh, thanks for watching. Till next time.